What's up guys, Roscoe here, aka Tight Pants McGee today. Quads are just too big for these pants. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of sled setup. This is the new 2023 Lynx Shredder RE. They're showing up, so if you ordered one, I hope you're getting it very swiftly at this point. But the dealer a lot of times doesn't set up the sled properly for the rider. Uh, so this is how to set up your sled like a pro. So we're gonna go over some things. We're gonna talk about a few things I like to run. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is our handlebar height. This is a huge one. The most important, we've been talking about it for years. Your bars should be set up when you stand in your neutral riding position on a Lynx or a Skidoo. You don't need to be all the way forward, just pretty much forward, almost standing over the front bolts uh, for your rear suspension mount. But as you stand here, with a slight bend in the knee, your arm should be straight. So as you can see right here, this is where my bars should be. They should be down here. Right here, I don't have as much uh, leverage on the sled with these tall bars. The other thing that you can see as well is this sled set up right now. The steering is not in line with the post. So if you're not gonna change your bar height, the least you need to do is move this so your handlebar riser is in line with your steering post. So this needs to be moved back like that as well. The other reason that I like a shorter riser is when you move a tall riser back in line with the post, naturally it's gonna push you back on the snowmobile, which then gets you more in the back seat, which changes the way the sled handles. So slamming those bars is my recommendation. I run the lowest bar. This is the 95 millimeter kit from BRP. So this is a 95 millimeter riser, way shorter than that, and I'm 5'11". Um, a lot of guys say, it hurts my back when I go down the trail, but like, dude, what are we doing? We don't ride mountain snowmobiles down the trail. That's not where they're supposed to be comfortable. As soon as you get in the NAR, that changes the whole way that your sled rides. And I don't know if you've ever ridden a moto bike, but those bars aren't up here either. So knock that shit off. So we're going to rip these off real quick, and then I'll talk about like setup of throttle, brake, and all that as we go. There's the difference right there in height. So if you go to a shorter riser, unless you're like 6'5", um, I guarantee by the end of the day, you'll have less arm fatigue with a shorter riser. Taller riser, you're just gonna use way more input in your arms and you're gonna be tired and you're gonna, you're gonna get stuck and you're gonna suck. So we don't wanna do that. If you're stuck, you suck. Yeah, you suck. So here you can see this is where I'm making sure the riser is in line with the post. Not only does it change where it puts you on the snowmobile, it also changes how the snowmobile steers and handles. This is like an absolute must. This is, you can't run it any other way. This is not a rider preference thing, I promise you guys. This is for the super nerds out there. We're looking for that perfect fit. Where I, this is a little bit of, of rider preference as far as bar roll goes. I like to have it just under the zero. So you can, you can go a little bit rider preference with this, but I don't recommend going much further away from uh, zero than this, just because it's just gonna make the sled feel weird um, and handle weird. Even if you get used to it, what it's gonna do to the handling sometimes isn't uh, ideal. The next is really important. This is a little bit of preference, but there's certainly a trend that a lot of the top riders um, do as far as controls go. The biggest thing is you wanna keep your wrists in a strong position at all times. So your wrists are strong like this, they're not strong like this or like this. So you don't want your, you don't wanna be riding all day and have your wrists like this on the brake lever over here. 
So a lot of guys I see have their brake lever way up here and their wrist is essentially broken right here when they ride most of the day. So having that brake lever tilted down keeps your, your wrist in a good strong position. Also, I'm a pointer finger guy, so all the time I need to move my lever way in to get the most leverage on that thing out here. So moving the lever in, tilting it down on the brake side of things, and then on the throttle side of things, I like to move mine in a little bit as well, but I like my throttle up a little bit. Not too high, but up just enough that, again, my wrist is straight here and uh, in, in a good riding position. So when I'm in essentially attack position like this, this is where I'm gonna spend most of my time riding, is my wrists are straight, bars are low, I'm in, I'm just ready to like destroy everybody in my path with that setup. So those are the things as far as uh, controls go. I like to keep the brake tight, but not too tight. You want it to be able to, you wanna be able to kind of move it and push on it if you have to. Um, you don't want it to be so tight that it's going to rip the, the reservoir off. If something it, it hits, you want it to move. Same goes with throttle. I like my throttle pretty um, snug, but like probably about like this, even a little bit tighter than this, just so I can move it and adjust. You can see I can move it, but then when I ride, it doesn't go anywhere. So having that as well is, is very um, nice. And it's still, I don't like it too high up because sometimes I do wrap around a lot of the top hill climb guys run a lower throttle because they spend a lot of time wrapped around, but they're like cornering in the flats, which we're not doing nearly as much um, in the back country. So. so the last thing on controls is your throttle cable tension. Uh, this will stretch. So this sled's brand new. It's got pretty good tension. Uh, you can see here. So you want a little bit of movement in there. You don't want it so tight that if any snow gets in there, then your sled's throttled up. But um, after a ride or two, it, it starts, that cable does stretch and you do get a lot more throttle free play. So, I mean, there's guys riding around there with like 80% throttle throw and they don't even know it. So uh, check that, tighten that up. It's right under this protected sleeve and uh, you're gonna get more throttle out of it. So that's about where you want it. You want a little bit about like that. No more than that, and you could have run a little bit less, but you don't want the sled to be uh, pulling away uh, on its lonesome. So on the front end of the sled, some setup stuff. All sleds are coming with adjustable skis. The, the sled's gonna handle the best if the ski is dead center, so bushings on each side. You can narrow them up if you want a little bit more, um, the sled to be a little bit easier to get on edge, but I actually run mine dead center. It's uh, So the carbide is right under the spindle. That's how the sled runs the best and handles. So. I'm actually gonna change this, but I'm gonna put Elevate spindles on this bad boy. So that's not gonna, I'm gonna do that now. The other thing, a lot of these sleds are coming with uh, adjustable shocks. Most days, I'm just gonna run my shocks in the medium position. Um, so these are three position KYBs from Lynx. And uh, so we have soft, medium, and hard. And really, I'm only going to run them in hard if I'm hitting big jumps. And then uh, sometimes I will run them all the way soft if I'm riding really technical terrain and the snow is maybe not so forgiving. But most days, I just like to keep it right in the middle on uh, standard. So now we're gonna go look at our limiter strap and talk about our rear shocks a little bit. So on the Shredder RE, uh, this is my favorite part of snowmobile is the rear skid and the suspension that it comes with. So 46 millimeter shocks, that's that diameter of that piston right there. So there's no other shocks like this out of the box on the market. Um, tuning these shocks, uh, I haven't ridden a production unit yet, so I'm just gonna ride th this for a while and then maybe do a little bit of tune, but we have high speed, low speed, and rebound adjustment on these shocks. The rails also already come stiffened up with reinforcement, but the major thing that you should look at is your limiter strap. So there's four adjustment holes on your limiter strap down here. I run mine on the, the 3900, um, one up from the bottom. That's a good balance of play, but also the sled still gets stuff done in the deep snow. If you really want the sled to play a lot, I know Bergmark, he runs his all the way out. And on the 4100, I also run mine all the way out. So that's your limiter strap setup. Something to think about. So some of my favorite aftermarket parts, I don't recommend much for people, but is stuff from Ice Age. The Elevate spindles are something I've been testing for like two years now on the Lynx, and I really like this. It's just a taller spindle, gets that front end up out of the snow, 
and uh, helps the sled not panel out as much. Does a number of things and uh, you should, see, there's a lot of us running this and um, it's one of my recommendations for sure for a good upgrade. This is obviously the Lynx DS. It's a prototype that I've been riding. Shout out, thanks for Lynx to, to get me on this thing. But I also put Ice Age bomber rails on it and the Ice Age Hellfire wheels down low. So you can see uh, it's just a bur burlier setup for this deep snow model. The RE doesn't really, I feel, need uh, rail support out of the box for me anyways. Um, for guys like Bergmark, he beefs his up, but um, Ice Age has great solutions for that as well. I'll probably throw some Hellfire wheels on this sled as well. So a few other things I like on my handlebar setups. I do really like the Lynx uh, handguards. These are BRP handguards, so the Skidoo's have very similar ones. They're actually really good and durable so far in my experience. And then I do actually wire tie my grips like the old Moto uh, riders so they don't spin because I love to warm my, run my hand warmers really hot, but then sometimes my grips spin after uh, towards the end of the season. So I just do that to eliminate that. Little mini bar bag from Giant Loop here, just big enough to hold my saw and a few other things. Quick draw. That actually fits really good with that low rider. And then on the storage, another Giant Loop product. This is really cool, this gas bag. This is a two gallon gas bag. They're really expensive, but my favorite thing about them is after I fill up my sled, I can just roll it up and put it in my tunnel bag. So they make these in two gallon, three gallon, four gallon, and five gallon. And then of course, the big link bag. This carries everything that I need in the backcountry. Waterproof, um, yeah, just carry a lot of stuff. So just stick my head in there and live in there that way. So that's why I also combo it with that so I can strap it down. So that's kind of my setup.